Okay, so um, basically what we've got here is um, I can delete this top line out, uh, but I'll actually just to illustrate. If you have two forward slashes like this, and then this is a comment. Basically, a comment inside of inside of a script or inside of code uh, on any language is basically just a way to comment the code so that you can add notes in the code. Uh, it's very very useful and it's pretty much necessary if you want to understand what's happening in the code. So if you ever see uh, two forward slashes like this inside of JavaScript, inside of Unity, it's just a comment and it doesn't change any functionality. It's just to make notes inside of the script. Okay. So let me just explain this here. What I'm doing here is I'm basically... Um, let me... I'm trying to think how best to explain this in a kind of simple way. Uh, let me start with the update loop, actually. That's the easiest one. So the update loop, I think I mentioned in the first video, is it, is it gets called or the fun or the the code inside of the update function gets called every frame. So every time the CPU does a cycle tick, or every time that the screen is rendered, it basically uh, calls this function. And this is a default function inside of Unity. I didn't write this myself. If you type function update, then Unity will always will call that update function every single frame. Okay. So inside of the update function, what we want to do is we want to check if the player pressed the mouse button down. So input dot get mouse button down is input is the library and get mouse button down is the function call that we want to check. In this case, what we're doing is we're saying zero. That is the left mouse button. It's not the right mouse button. If you wanted the right mouse, I think that's you would enter one here. So what it's doing is just saying if the user did press the left mouse button, then do this code here. And this is kind of similar to the, the paddle scripts that we had in the game screen. So we're doing a similar kind of thing. Um, if, so if the user does press the left mouse button, then what we want to do is create a ray, a ray cast laser, shooting from the point that the player taps on the screen down through the main camera and into the game world. Okay. And what we're giving the ray is we're defining, we're saying, hey, this is... Uh, Basically, we're giving them the mouse position. Now, inside of uh, inside of Unity, the mouse position can also be a tap position with the finger. But so you can use mouse, or you can use um, you can use the uh, another another function, which I won't explain now. But if you use input.mouse position, you can basically do that for web or for mobile, and it will register both. So what we're doing is we're looking at we're trying to get the mouse position. And making a ray so that the laser, the ray is basically a laser that gets shot into the game world. Okay. Then once the laser is shot, we're saying if uh, once we uh, once we do create a, a ray cast, which is basically this this laser or, um, uh, or or ray, is if it did hit something, then we want to do this code here. Now this is a little bit more of uh, programming. How do you say concepts? But what I'm passing in here is the arguments. So physics.raycast is the function, and I want to give it two parameters, or, or arguments as we call them in code. Now one of them is the ray, which is basically the, the direction to, to shoot, um, which is the laser itself. It's the, ray, uh, the laser that gets shot into the game world. So that's the first thing we want to pass it. The next thing we want to do is raycast hit. Uh, and this raycast hit contains the information of any object that that laser hits. Okay, so for example, it will contain the game object and then we can get the game object name. Okay, so these two are called arguments and basically we pass those into, fu into functions sometimes or we pass them as parameters. We say, hey, uh, for example, let's say this was um, a factory.buildcar, then we could pass the argument is, say, parameter Ford uh, and then we can say Ford or. Okay, so it will factory.car build a Ford four door. So these are these are arguments um, in code and I'll, I'll probably mention that a few times but that's just a little overview of how functions and, and code works. So once we've created this laser, this ray, into the game world what we want to do is uh, if, it, if it did hit something, if, if the ray cast did hit an object in the game world we want to check what that object is. So the raycast hit here contains the information. So uh, what we want to do is say, hey, if it did hit an object that's called play button, 
then we want to call this function here. We want to do this functionality or do this code. Okay. So Raycast hit contains a transform. Um, now that might be a little bit complicated. Uh, this is probably a touch over beginner's kind of Unity code, but basically any game object contains a transform, and a transform is basically if I go to the main, if I go to the play button, it's this component here. This is the transform, and transform contains the scale, the position, and the rotation information. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is check the transform and then look for the name. And if the name is equal to play button, which is this, which is the name of this object here, then we want to call this functionality. Okay. And the application dot load level main game means we want to load the main game level. And for the argument or parameter, we want to give it the main game name. Okay, which is basically this here. So what I would do is I click enter, copy it by control and B or V, uh, sorry, control and C or command and uh, C, and then I basically control and V or uh, command and V to paste it in there. Okay, so we want the name of the main game uh, scene that we created in the first videos. Okay, and I'm just going to click file command and S or control and S to save it, and then go back into Unity. So I, I know, guys, that might have been a little bit complicated, especially for like um, uh, beginners into Unity. Um, you know, I'm trying to keep this as sort of like hands-on as possible and not go too much into theory. But I think some explanations here and there should help you guys, uh, especially when looking at code that might be a little bit complicated. Uh, but you know, first time I came into into programming in general, that stuff was extremely, extremely uh, tough to wrap my head around. But Basically, I kind of went ahead with faith and, and started doing tutorials and, and just picking things up and stuff made sense. So don't worry if you're not getting a lot of what I've just said. Um, I know it is quite sort of conceptual um, and it's not, it's a little bit hard to grasp, but just bear with me and you'll start, it'll start to, to grow on you. So don't worry too much about that. Okay, so let me just check where I'm up to. So I've just pasted the code. Okay, so we created the menu scene scripts, which is this one here. There was no errors. The little turny uh, um, kind of check icon here didn't uh, didn't show any errors, so that's great. So this menu scene script that we just created, we want to put that into the game. Okay, uh, the reason that we want to put it into the game is if it's just in the project folder here, it won't do anything. The project folder is just like a, a container, like in Windows Explorer or Finder on the Mac. Uh, any scripts or objects that we want to be in the game, we have to put down here into the hierarchy inside of the game scene. Okay, So this menu script right now won't do anything. So I can click play uh, and I can tap on play and nothing will happen because we've, we've not put that functionality into the game scene yet. Okay, So click on game object, create other. The game object is selected, this is a new one. It's called game object by default. So click enter and then I'm going to call this general scripts. And then I'm going to grab my um, my menu scene script here and drag that in. Now you notice with the men the general scripts here, it's an empty game object that is inside the world. There's nothing visual. There's no cube. There's no sphere. There's no collider on it. All we are putting this in here for is just so that it can run this script. So uh, when when a game object is entered into the scene, if there's any script on the game object, then that that script then becomes live, it then has functionality and it can do things, whatever you want it to do. So if, I'm, if I just, just to illustrate, if I go to general scripts here, click on F, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and then just move it up, you can see there's empty, there's nothing, there's nothing there and you can't see it in the game view either, okay, which is what we want. Okay, so if I now click on play, and this wouldn't work right now but just to illustrate and Okay, so it will work because I've actually included the functionality. Um, there was something else in the tutorial that I'm about to explain, okay? Um, so what on your side, what you'll need to do is because uh, you'll need to do something different because when I was preparing this video, I actually already did this step, but I will explain it, okay? So we need to add the scenes to the build settings. Now remember the scenes are the levels. Uh, the menu scene is level uh, is basically the first level that we will put into the game and then the game scene is the second one. So I want to add those two scenes. So the first one is go to File, Build Settings, and then what you will do is add. Click on Add Current. 
Now I've already added the uh, I already added the main game scene originally, but as you can see here, you've got the menu scene. So if you click on Add Current, your menu scene will pop up, which is the scene that we are in right now. Now what I want to do is I want to make the menu scene zero. Now yours should already be zero up over on the right here. I'm just going to drag this up. Okay. Uh, what the zero means is it's the first scene that gets loaded when the game starts. So usually we want it to be a splash screen or a logo scene, but in this case we're just going to make it the menu scene. Okay. So I'm just going to cross this off. Click File, Save. I'm also just going to save the project just as a habit. And then what you want to do is go into double click on main game here in the scenes folders and you can uh, expand or, or uh, make, I don't know what the other word is, anyway, you can expand it. So you can go into the main game scene, click on file, build settings, and then you also want to add the current as well. Now I've already added the current one before, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to type, I'm going to untap this. So we've got the menu scene which is zero, so the first one that's loaded. And then we've got the main game scene which is Basically, that's one. That's fine. It's the second. It's the second one. But the important thing is that we've got both scenes inside of the build settings. The build settings basically are, are you're telling Unity what scenes you want to build. Um, you can have hundreds of scenes, and perhaps sometimes you don't want to build all of the levels for this platform. Say in the iPhone, you want to build. Uh, a shop scene, but on Android you don't want to build a shop scene because maybe you don't have the functionality for people to buy things in the game. Um, so what you do is you go over here and you would untap it so that that scene doesn't get built into the game because if it gets built it takes up more memory, it takes up more space when the user in installs it. So you want to keep it as low as possible. If you don't need a scene, don't build it. Okay. So we're going to cross that off. We're going to double click on, uh, actually let's just go File, Save just as a habit, and then double click on the menu scene, all right? And then if I click play, and like we saw before, there we go, it goes into the main game scene, which is exactly what we want. Okay, I'm just gonna let this run for a second. Okay, that's fine, there we go, that would be game over there. So what we want to achieve here is basically want to get the loop going in the game. So let me just double check my, uh, Double check my points here. So, okay. So, file, save. Let's go into the main game now. And what I'm quickly going to do is I'm just going to explain something here that I didn't do before in the previous video. Is what we want to do is basically make these walls bouncy as well. Okay. Uh, the reason is that if I click on play, what you'll notice is that the ball starts off real fast, and then it slows down, um, and it goes slower and slower and slower. Basically, because what is happening is when it's hitting these walls, it's causing friction. Uh, it's losing some of its energy, like in a real-world physics object. Um, now, we don't want to do that. We want this to be a virtual pong ball that just continues without losing any energy, and it will go faster and faster and faster. So you see here, that's the problem. It's, it's basically stopped its, its kind of y-axis energy, and it's now it probably just bounced slower and slower and eventually stopped. Okay, so let me just turn that off.